I'm looking for the unashamed ones. I'm looking for the unafraid ones. I wonder, I wonder if the devil knows what he's in for. Messing with this generation. I wonder, I wonder if all of the forces of the enemy are somewhere shivering, scared, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. I wonder if God is excited because he already knows what's about to break out in here this afternoon. I got a feeling that heaven is turned up right now. And there's no reason for heaven to be turned up and we're turned down. So I'm gonna give you exactly 10 seconds and I'm gonna say two words throughout my time with you this afternoon. Two simple words, praise break. And when I say them, you have to give God the craziest, most radical, life-changing expression of praise that you've ever given. So that means you can't just clap and ooh, and ooh. You've got to actually do something you've never done, which means you're going to have to do a cartwheel. You're going to have to spin around. You're going to have to shake your face. You're going to have to do something really crazy because God deserves crazy praise. And I am in the midst of a crazy, radical, on fire for Jesus generation. I can't believe what I'm seeing this afternoon. Where have y'all been hiding? This nation needs you. The earth needs you. Yeah! We need this generation. And man, I feel the strength of the Holy Ghost in this church right now. Praise break. the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. First of all, for those who don't know me, which is pretty much all of you, um, I want to bring you greetings from my wife who is not able to travel with me. She has a ministry obligation in Florida and she is traveling with our Florida in the building. She's traveling with our three-month-old daughter, and I have with me my 15-month-old son. And so we had two kids inside of a year. That's how I roll. Bang, bang. I was 37 when I got married. I was a virgin, not a shame to say that. We waited. So I'm making up for lost time, amen. My wedding marriage counselor was like, Brother John, it's so good you're getting married right now because, you know, Jesus could come back at any moment. I said, he better wait till I check in this hotel. That's what he better do. I've been waiting 37 years. He can wait. Don't we'll just hold on, Jesus. You've been up there 2,000 years. Give me a few moments, please. Let me lay hands. I'm for real. And I say that to encourage this generation that God truly is a keeper if you want to be kept. I want you to honor God with your body, live a holy life, serve him with your sexuality, walk in purity. 
Young ladies, don't allow anyone to dishonor who you are. You are the daughter of a king. You are a Proverbs 31 woman. If a young man doesn't want to respect you, doesn't want to honor you, he is not worth your time. You, you are covenant worthy. And any man that wants to approach you should be talking to the heavenly father and your earthly father or whoever your caregivers are first. Guard against unnecessary conversation and illegal text messages. Hey, girl, send me a picture. Send him a picture of an open Bible. With his nasty self. I want to encourage young men to keep your seed, for your seed is your inheritance. Your seed is your inheritance, and as young men, you have the honor of creating a legacy. Guard your legacy. Guard your purity as best you can and stand with others who are walking in that path. Stay connected to people who will hold you accountable. Don't allow the shifting winds of today's society, which is morally ambiguous, and you can do what you want, and just live how you want, and everything's cool. The devil is a lie. God is still holy. The word still stands, and Jesus is still coming back. Can I get an amen from some young people in Colorado Springs right about now? Praise break. I think you're probably supposed to stay down there, though. Wow. That's awesome. Maybe I won't do a whole lot of those anymore. This is an honor to be speaking to world leaders because that's what you are. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, verse 10, for as the rain comes down from heaven and the snow, uh-oh, that's protection. Is that what that, it's awesome. Military, just stand, I feel good. That's what I'm saying. We look like a reverse Oreo, vanilla with the chocolate in the middle. <laughs> this moment was already written in heaven. The Bible says, For as the rain comes down from heaven and the snow, that it may water the earth. It does not return there, that it may water the earth and bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that flows forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that for which I sent it. It will accomplish what I please and prosper in the thing for which I sent it. You are not simply a human being. You are not the product of a romantic encounter between mom and dad. You are not the will of man. You are the express image of a living God. You cannot sneak into the earth. You cannot accidentally get into the earth. You have to be spoken into the earth. When God looked at the landscape of society and saw what the enemy was trying to do, he waited until the right moment. You had always been in God's mind, but at a certain point, you went from God's mind to God's mouth, and he spoke you, and the egg connected to the seed, and you grew in your mother's womb until such time as you became too much for the womb to contain and the womb rejects the baby which is what we call birth and God says I'm pushing you out into another level of destiny another level of purpose another level of abundance of overflow of relevance I need you to step up to the plate and utilize every gift every skill set every place of dormant anointing that this earth is
is in need of. Talk about having the right conference at the right place. I'm glad we're in an elevated place. I'm glad we're far above sea level because we need to get above every principality and power of the enemy and cast down every high thing. We're in the right place at the right time. We need some young people who understand that you are exactly who God was counting on. Me, 14 years old? Yeah. Me, 13? Yeah, but I'm only 16. Yeah, guess what? And Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 31 years, did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, walked in the ways of his father David, not turning aside to the right or to the left. And in the eighth year of the reign of King Josiah, in the eighth year of his reign, he began to seek the God of his father David. At 16, he was hungering for the deep things of God. So God is saying there's some teenagers in here that I need to step up to the plate. I need you to begin to get hungry for the deep things of God, the manifest presence of God, the glory of God, the Shekinah, the weighty presence that the man of God sings about. We need a real move of God, not more church, not more sermons, not more high fives and have fun and just come to camp. It's great to meet people and make new friends, but we need the presence of the living God. And Paul said, I did not come here with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of power in the Holy Ghost. And that's what we need right now. Are there any teenagers that are ready to stand up and be greatly used of God in a desperate time? Somebody make some noise. I have decided that through my life or my death, God will be glorified. For the gospel of Jesus Christ, I'll either die for it or they'll take my life because of it. And whether you know it or not, you are living in the most unpleasant time for Christians in the history of this country. Never has there been a more, a least popular time to be a believer. Everything that we believe is being attacked. We are labeled bigots for standing on the word. We are labeled hate mongers for preaching truth. We are being marginalized slowly but surely. People are legislating things that if we speak against it, they're going to label it hate speech. In a moment, they're going to start attacking churches because that's the end goal of the enemy is to mute the church. But that idiot must not get the revelation that Jesus said upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Everything the devil has done and will do has already failed. Praise bright. That's awesome. To the adults, parents, youth leaders, youth pastors, senior leaders, volunteers, there's never been a more necessary moment for you to remain in youth ministry. Us growing up, so different than what these kids are dealing with. To this young generation, I'm sorry, I, I wish that we could have turned over a better structure to you. But unfortunately, it's on you now. God doesn't bring this many leaders together if failure is an option. You're here right now because you are the best that God can do. I need you to wake up in the morning when you get up and look in the mirror, you need to declare what David said, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You need to look in the mirror and be like, I am amazing. Because God created you that way, and it is not pride to say about yourself what God has said about you first. We're in a culture, an age of media, entertainment, art, politics 
standing in stark contrast to the prevailing winds of society is the church. You, you're the wall that the enemy wants to break. Thousands of teenagers in this church right now, but I'm looking for the wild ones, the crazy ones. I know, I know everybody's not going to become a prophet. I know everybody's not going to be a senior pastor, but there are some leaders in this room that are going to change the world. There's somebody in the back of this church right now. Maybe your friends are laughing, texting, and talking, but you're serious about this thing. This thing is real to you. I want to talk to you for a few moments. Now, this stage is huge, and this whole thing, I feel like Michael Jackson up here when he was black. And, um, <laughs> yo, that's the kind of music I grew up on. I know y'all listen to whoever, but when I was growing up, music was music. And uh, back in the day, you know, I used, I used to grow up. I'm telling you, I was a Michael Jackson fan. I, you know, the problem with Mike is that he had an anointing, but didn't have the right person activated. And so clearly he was a worship leader. He had the ability to write songs that the world would sing, but instead of allowing the worship to flow through him, he wanted it to come to him. And worship does not fit the frame of man. It is only fitting for the form of God. So when men try to steal worship, it never works. But I look at that man and look at the gift that he had and had somebody grab that gift and nurtured it. He could have been one of the great psalmists like David. But for me, I take those songs, I turn them around. I miss Mike so much, I order my food at McDonald's, Michael Jackson style, just to keep his memory alive. I was at McDonald's, they were like, can I take your order? I was like, can I get a number one with the fries and a soda? Could you add some chicken nuggets, sweet and sour? Won't you hurry? Chicken nuggets, are you okay? Chicken nuggets, are you okay? Are you okay, chicken? All right, stop. I change his songs around and turn them into gospel songs. People say, well, why would you do that? Because that's the devil's music. Let me tell you something. The devil doesn't have music. The devil has never created anything. He can only pervert what has already been created. God is the author of all sound, of all music. I take everything that he took, I'm taking it back. I take songs that make them gospel. It's close to me night something evil's lurking in the dark <laughs> under the moonlight the holy spirit really wants your heart so close your eyes and realize this is not imagination <laughs> and all the while the king of kings he wants your very life your very life his name is jesus Jesus Christ bled and died and rose just to give eternal life. His name is Jesus. Ooh, Jesus Christ bled and died and rose to bring you eter, eter, no lie. That's enough of that. <laughs> there was a sound that we grew up on, but your sound is different. You have a different key. But God has given you the ability to change the world right where you are. But you can't be domestic. I don't need you to be like the generation that came before you. Your unique gift, your calling, doesn't look like anyone else's. Just like I said in Isaiah 55, you are a unique expression of God and your thumbprint is an original thumbprint. There has never been another you in the history of the world and there'll never be another you. And there's something that only you can do that no one else can do. You've got to find out from the Holy Spirit through prayer, 
Father, what am I called to do? I want to do your will. I want to serve you in purpose. And I want no stone left unturned. Is anybody ready to go wild for their king? The earth is in trouble. Matthew 24 is happening in your lifetime. Wars, rumors of war, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, earthquakes, pestilences in various places. It's happening in your lifetime, which means 1 Thessalonians 4 could happen in your lifetime, and he will crack the sky at the last trumpet sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those that remain will be caught up to meet him in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words. Does anybody else look forward to seeing Jesus crack the sky? This nation needs the Lord. And I believe God's going to use your generation to get our nation's attention. So today I want to talk from the subject of the wild ones. The wild ones. Now this word is only for the radical ones. The crazy ones, the misunderstood ones, the misfits, the ones that everybody's like, you're totally weird. Because you are. You never fit in. What about the, some of you, you try to fit in. It's like, can I hang with you guys? Can I totally hang with you? Can I hang with you, please? Sarah, Jenna, please, can I hang with you? And also, and then sometimes. And then, listen, stop trying to fit in. You were never called to fit in. You were always called to stand out. You were always called to be different. You are peculiar. You are royal. You are a holy nation, his own special people. You are different. Stop trying to fit in. Leaders don't fit in. They stand out. You're not called to follow. You're called to lead. Let the leaders lead. No longer should you apologize for the gifts God has given you. No longer should you minimize the anointing that's on your life. Stop minimizing the calling on your life to make insecure people feel better about themselves. Be everything God has called you to be. Do everything God has created for you to do. And if people can't handle it, they need to take it up with the God that gave you multiple gifts. And by the way, I did say gifts. You've got more than one thing, more than one calling, more than one gift, more than one level of authority, more than one place of position, more than one place of prominence. God is giving you multiples. This is the end of the show. This is the end of the fireworks display. 2,000 years of firebombing after firebomb in the Holy Ghost, but now is the grand finale. This is when God pulls all the stops out and lets the devil know, you already defeated, but I'm going to make it a big, fat, open display, you loser. Listen, let me tell you something. Don't you ever again be afraid of a devil. The Bible says when Jesus rose up, he said, I got all power in heaven, earth, and under the earth. That means the devil is under your feet. Stop talking the devil's face to face. If you want to talk to the enemy, write a note on the bottom of your shoe because that's where he is under your feet. From your seat, from your seat in your section without moving, praise break. God is looking for the ones who he's been whispering to and you know you can't escape his voice anymore. He wakes you up at weird hours of the night, 408, 326, 254. You think that it's gas, that's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> You're like, oh, he's like, no, wake up, I gotta talk to you. Not now, Jesus, I gotta use the bathroom, Jesus. God says, I woke you up in the middle of the night because that's the only time I can get you by yourself. You are the most gifted generation the world has ever seen. You're also the most distracted generation the world has ever seen. Most of you don't even turn your phone off at night anymore. 
your sleep can be interrupted at one o'clock in the morning because somebody sent a text or Facebook notification came through or some Instagram notification. You can't even sleep a full night because you don't know how to unplug. And you think that God's going to share the mysteries of the kingdom when he has to share you with Facebook and Twitter and whatever else you're doing? Do you think he's going to celebrate this generation that's all about Facebook and they won't put their face in his book? God is looking for an undistracted generation. God wants to know, I know that you want to act like you're cool in front of your friends. You want to come in here and act all hard. And he's saying, but would you humble yourself? Would you listen? Would you break yourself in my presence? Would you allow me to speak to you? Since I created you in my image, all the things that you're insecure about, I could finish those things in you if you would come and spend time with me. If you would allow me who created you to give you identity purpose and destiny you stop looking for validation in mirrors trying to fix what was never broken in the first place if you came to me you would understand that the reason why things bother you the way they do is because i put something in you it's an, a righteous indignation the thing that keeps you up at night is the thing you're designed to solve if you can't sleep that it bothers you so bad, God's given you an anointing for it. And let me tell you something. There's a couple things that keeps me, couple things that keep me up at night. One of them is that the church is under attack. And I'm tired of people legislating things that minimize the voice of the church. I'm never going to shut up about Jesus. I'm never going to be quiet about Jesus. Let me tell you something right now. Jesus is the son of the living God. He's the first begotten of the dead. He lived a sinless life. 30 years of purpose for three years of ministry for three hours of destiny don't tell me that he's not the son of God lived a sinless life he is the full payment for my sin only through him can I get back to the father he is the door to the father he is the way the truth and the life nobody gets to the father except through him you're crazy you believe in virgin birth yes I do I believe Mary was a virgin I believe angels announced his birth and God declared him when he was baptized I believe Jesus is the truth. He is the hope of the world. And Christ in us is the hope of glory. Praise, break, praise, break, praise, break. Praise, break. Hey! <laughs>